Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Lock and Key Season 3, Episode 5. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So we're immediately picking up where the Episode 4 left off. I did not expect the Nina and Bodhi conversation to go the way it did. I thought Nina would have been like... Oh, uh, nothing. I was just looking for something. We should go somewhere else. But she's like, Bodhi, what is this? He's like, well, she grabbed on to me. And it's like, wait, why didn't you tell us about her coming here? She looks dead. I don't know. Something maybe with the time shift key because she's not supposed to be here. And just like weaseling his way out of, you know, and it's just like, oh, God. Uh, but obviously Nina's like, there's still something up here. So it's like, right, give me the time shift key. And I'm gonna go explain this Kinsey who's explaining who's, you know, uh, deal with everything with Tyler because now Tyler remembers everything and I thought it was this nice moment between them actually rekindling and everything and then uh, um, getting their their brother sister relationship back to where it was before to some small extent obviously they don't have time to really revel in it before like you know the other shoes always ready to drop it up uh, for this family but for for Kenzie and, uh, well, for Tyler, Tyler admits he thought basically forgetting about magic would make his pain go away, but it didn't. The pain stayed there. Yeah, you might not have magic at the root of it, but it doesn't take away everything that you went through, all that pain. And now, at the very least, he can understand more about why the pain happened, what happened with Jackie. That it wasn't just some, like, aneurysm that happened. It was like, no, it was something key and magic-related. doesn't make it any less tragic, but at the very least, you can now understand it. Like, not that, not, not that it makes any sense that she's gone, but it just, it, it makes it... It makes it you're now equipped with understanding what happened, and now you can find some way of moving forward. Because you can't just shortcut your way around that pain. And he thought by letting go of the magic, he'd be able to get around that pain. It's like, that pain is there. You're going to have to go through it one way or another, at least with the memories you're well equipped. And now you're closer to your, you're back with your family. They are there for you, and you're able to fully connect with them and get their support throughout all this. But like I said, before they could even really enjoy that, the other shoe drops. And then it's just like, something's up with Bodhi. We got to find out. Like, he's been acting different. And it's like, where he dodges bodies under the bed. It's like, well, we Dodge has already played dead before the season one finale. And we saw how that turned out. Did not work out well for Ellie in that regard. But, um... So what are we going to... What do we? How do we know that this is true and that it's not just another fake out? But, um... But also the thing of like, right, the body doesn't seem like it's decaying, even though it's been a couple days. So, apparently. So, Nina shows off the time shift key, which I also love. Tyler's like, wait, she knows, how do you, oh, she used the memory key on herself. He's like, wow, I guess I really have missed a lot while I was gone. And, uh... They see the time, like, obviously the sand is running, and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. They're making a point of showing it now, but they never did any time the time shift key was... Because they made sure, like, when the time shift key was used, and Bodhi and Dodge were here, brought pop back to present day, that the hourglass flipped upside down. And I was like, what was that about? Now they're making a point of showing it off, I'm like... There's a limit to something going on here, and we find out later on from Duncan what that limit is. So, it does seem like what I was right about the time shift key is right that to prevent, like, everything, like, the moment you pop back to reality, it's almost like you didn't time travel. That's how that works. But it has a fail-safe in it that any time uh, something is brought back from the past to prevent a paradox, so there's already a written-in rule to protect you from, like, the timey wiminess of it all, um... There's a, a fail safe that the moment the, the sand runs out. So it seems like the sand runs for like, so you have a couple days, which we could see the applications of that potentially later on. But at the very least, to prevent a paradox from happening, anything that came back from a different time will pop back. So there is no saving anyone. If you Even if you'd save someone, say like Tyler goes back in time to see Jackie and brings her back present day, it'd only be a couple days before she'd end up returning same thing for their dad there's no like so it's a it's a temporary time travel once again it's, the example i use it's like yo-yo you 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 go there in a, a span of a certain time and then you pop back to where you were almost like nothing happened 
Uh, granted, once again, Yo-Yo's abilities from Agents of Chill works a little differently, but using that similar principle. And so the paradox stuff is set, the time is set there to prevent a paradox, which the way things play out later on, which we'll get to that, opens up a whole world of questions of, well, how the hell does that work now? Because that cre that's creating a paradox in itself, but we'll have to wait. So, all the while that's happening, um, they end up, Nina's distracting Bodhi because Bodhi breaks his uh, sh uh, switch just so he can have an excuse of like, oh, where's the mending key? It's in the chest. Oh, well, open the chest so I can get the mending key, yada, 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 so on and so forth, right? But Gideon came to visit him and was like, yo, get the keys. If you don't, I'm going to lay siege to this house, you know? And it's like, and I noticed it immediately. It's like, oh, you lied. You didn't say you knew where the keys were. You're like, oh, you haven't been able to get to the cabinet and you don't know where they had the keys hidden. It's like, you do know. You're just not saying. So it's like, right. My thought about what Dodge had planned was right. It's like, right, you wanted the alpha key so you could kill Gideon. Once again, though, I'm sure Gideon had the plan to always kill you. Once again, you're unaware what happened to your cohort, cohort Eden, uh, trying to be in control. And it's like, right, both of you have two different ideas about how you want things to roll. But nevertheless... The moment Kinsey and Tyler saw the body, they immediately recognized, well, oh, Kinsey figured, like, right, it's like a sock out of its, uh, a foot out of a sock, and Tyler was like, wait, what? It's like, this is what it looks like when you use the ghost key, and that's what Bodhi had, so it's like, right, this isn't Bodhi, it's Dodge, then Bodhi is, and then the wall starts frosting up, it's like, yeah, Bodhi's a ghost, because he tried to warn his mom last episode, but Bodhi kind of broke the, the, the mug before they had an opportunity to, so... Either way, um, because Sam was doing the same thing last season, trying to warn them about Dodge. Luckily, they stepped in when they did because uh, Bodie was about to go. Like, seeing his kid hand grabbing a knife, I couldn't help but think of Chucky. It was like, yeah, this is this is about to go. But I guess, like, not even just Chucky. I mean, I guess, like, God, uh, the Omen, uh, I guess a little poltergeist-ish. A little um, orphan, a little bit, like a little bit of everything that's kind of used like quote unquote evil children or like someone's possessed or obviously in the case of the orphan, it wasn't an actual child. That whole stipulation, right? So that's interesting. But luckily they got to Bodhi at time and it's like, right, we're going to put you through the ghost. And he's like, all right, I'm, I got to help you with Gideon. I want to get rid of him because once he gets all the keys, he's going to be able to destroy this world. But he's like, I actually like Meat World. He doesn't want it destroyed. He doesn't. He's like, yo, I actually like it in this world. I just want to stay. I want to have the power of the keys and everything. Because to some extent, you can make the argument Dodge has become a little too attached to humanity here and just enjoys the luxuries of it because the demon, the Dodge remembers what what it's like in other words, like, oh, the luxuries of the human experience and just being able to rule this world with the keys, it's more so your thing, but his plan is to destroy this world by bleeding over their world, and it's like, no. What I also thought was interesting is we kind of find out, I figured he had to be top dog to some extent, the demon inside of Gideon, but the way Dodge talks about it, it's like, he's basically a god in our world. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. No wonder you guys kind of, like, submit to him. I figured he was a big deal, but I didn't realize he was a literal god to you guys. So, either he kind of rules over them like a god, like no one challenges him, like, or, like, I, I want a power and everything wise, would he be equated to a god? Like, not just, like, position and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, how they meant, whether he meant that, like, just society from, from a societal standpoint, he's worshipped like a god, or is it just that he has the power and position and everything, and maybe he's, like, the oldest of the demons, so, like, he holds that, like, hierarchy over all other demons, Sadly, before they can put Bodhi through the door, they're using the, the uh, demons or uh, Gideon and his men used to plant key to block them. So they're stuck inside. So it's like, cool, we got to arm ourselves. So need to get the alpha key so they can kill Gideon. At the same time, Ellie learns from Rufus all the ins and outs of what's going on. And Nina tries to call... I mean, uh, Ellie tries to call Nina earlier, but, you know, of course, Bodhi got... I was almost... Well, they're already on track to figure things out on their own, but Ellie and Rufus are on their way, so they can meet up eventually. With the way the episode ends, probably meet up with Tyler and Kinsey and Ellie... I mean, and Nina, and get them out of there, and they can find somewhere else to kind of regroup now, so... That's probably the direction that's heading, but... I, uh, that was pretty smart using the music box, because at least Gideon messed up and used... Uh, Bolton's name, so 
get him to take himself to the whale house. And you're like, oh, so close. So just another step or two he would have going through, but Gideon broke the music box before Tyler could... Because if Tyler had probably switched it over to Gideon, it probably would have stopped regardless anyway, so it would have been probably... It probably would have stopped Bolton, but at the very least, could have stopped Gideon from, uh, you know, doing what he was doing, so... Kenzie's dealing with the other guy. Luckily, Bodie came in. Well, Dodge comes in with the angel wings. It's like, oh, this is only going to hurt a little bit. And throws him into the well. And we see him basically disintegrate. I was like, wow. Because we've never seen what it looks like when an echo goes back through that doorway. Like, Dodge always managed to avoid it. So, it's almost ironic that Dodge, the demon possessed, uh, the, well, the demon who's also an echo, uh, also managed to, well, that's also, well, I was about to say, I was about to say, oh, that, then Gideon was straight, but I'm like, right, Gideon's, no, Dodge is no longer in their echo body, because uh, they were, they had the benefit of, like, at least in their body, they could be both, they both get to be a human and an echo, I mean, a demon and an echo, in this case, you're just a demon possessing a kid's body, and so, yeah, this fragile body, like any human, fragile human body, could die, so you're not in your body where you're immortal, so, there's that stipulation to it, so... Either way, the point was, I, I just thought it was ironic that Dodge and an Echo ended up being the one that do that to another Echo, so. And first, once again, first time in a series we've gotten an opportunity to actually see what that would look like. They don't just fade away. It's like they literally get, like, once again, like, uh, like the particle effect. It's almost like, like they got grinded into, like, sparks, you know, that, that type of, um, display of how they showcase it I thought was really, really interesting. Even Bo, uh, Dodge being like, right, we're in this together. Give me the alpha key. I can get close enough to kill Gideon. We all want that. But it's also like, yeah, but once Gideon's dealt with, it's like, well, Dodge doesn't want to be in Bodhi's body, but at least being in Bodhi's body gave Dodge a leverage, gave Bo, uh, Dodge leverage to, so like, right, as long as I'm in your brother's body, if I threaten to hurt this body, it's like, well, I'll lose, but you'll lose too, so I can make it, it just hurt for you, Loxon, because knowing what you end up beating me, in, yada, yada, so it could be just like a fail-safe on Dodge's part, like, but once again, you'd still have to deal with Dodge, um, Dodge probably assumed, like, right, because none of them know the rules of the time shift key at that time, so Dodge probably thought, like, right, I get back in my body or whatever, and you try and send me back to my time, or at the very least, I get back in my body, you get your brother back, and we just kind of, like, we move on. I mean, it's not like they'd ever let you go, so I don't know, but it's like, right, you mutually both want the same thing, because even Dodge knew, like, he's probably, well, I want to get rid of him, but once again, I believe, I believe that... Gideon was going to kill Dodge regardless. But I thought it was uh, interesting. It's like, yeah, when they're about to see your house, it's like, oh, well, what about the boy? Kill him. Find him and kill him. Because it's like, yeah, I don't need you anymore. If I'm going to get my keys to myself, you had every opportunity to get me the keys. So I, I've, let's see, like I keep saying, I was under the assumption you're going to kill uh, Dodge from the beginning. But maybe you were like, no, I was going to give you a chance to rule by my side. But you failed me time and time again. So I'm just going to get rid of you. Like, I don't need you around if you're going to be a failure. You're, if you're a failure in this regard, you're going to be a failure in regard of um, being my right hand. So it's kind of shot when he ended up shooting Bodie. But I mean, it's like, right, he, ain't, he doesn't care about this family. He's like, yeah, I'll shoot a kid if I have to. It's like, but uh, Dodge is like, here, here's these keys. I got some. But made sure to, and if you notice, you're like, right, you notice that the alpha key wasn't amongst them, so. They end up hold, hold, handing over the rest of the keys, so. It's the only way to make sure that Bodhi is okay, that um, Gideon doesn't end up killing him. Uh, but like I brought up earlier, uh, Duncan, like, told them and explained how the time shift key worked. But, uh, and then it, the moment he said that, I was like, but how does that work with Dodge inside of Bodhi's body? I was like, is that, I'm like, that's not going to just naturally reset itself into what that should be. But I figured it would, it would kind of mess up any plans Dodge had of killing Gideon. And it sure as hell did. Because the moment Dodge is about to stab Gideon with the alpha key, Dodge, still in Bodhi's body, disappears. And that's why I'm like, how the hell does that not, how, what does that do? Because it's not like, oh, they got put back in the original bodies, yada, yada, yada. It's like, no, 
because Dodge, the demon, its essence is not in the original body anymore. It's in Bodhi, so technically it still registers as, oh, you were brought back from the past, so Bodhi's body. So it's like, when that time resets itself, and there's like two Bodhis in that timeline, it's like, and it's like, wait, I'm from the future. Like, how do you, dude... Does, that means time is going to get broken. Like, that failsafe still kind of has a loophole to it. I mean, not let... How do you dance around that? That's going to be super complicated. Because, like, I guess the only other solution would be, like, to get Bodhi into Dodge's body, which would be interesting because Ellie had to walk around as Dodge for that little bit of time when she came back. So it would be almost a, an instance of that to some extent. But it's like... I don't know. I mean, for one, the back door is blocked right now. But also... Gideon's in the process of destroying it. Well, at least the, there's a portal opening up in the um the bottom of the floor. But it's like, I was kind of scared because I'm like, what if that ends up destroying the entire lock house? Because a lot of those keys are tied to the house, and which also includes the ghost door and the ghost key. So, like, what are you going to do in that regard? I mean, to be fair, they don't have any of the keys anyway. Gideon has literally all the keys. Cause yeah, it would it would make it hard. Cause I was cause my thought was I expected lock house to blow up at the end. I thought like the entire house would cave in to the like uh, the portal being open and stuff. Right, that's what I was kind of thinking. But because I was about to say the only way you could remedy it, remedy this is if you use the time key to go back in time, grab Bodie slash Dodge, bring them back to this time, then use the ghost key slash ghost door to switch the bodies out, and then just wait for Dodge to, to dis disappear, and you'd have her locked up till then, or, or temporary ally yet again. I don't know. You can't let Dodge run amok is kind of the whole point. So that's why I was like, how did Dodge expect this whole thing to work out in the end? But I'm sure Dodge was just trying to buy herself enough time until she, like, remedied, remedied things in, more in her favor. But, yeah, like, that's the only way I could see them reversing this Bodhi thing. Because I'm like, how else do you fix that? It's a weird thing. And, I mean, I don't know if time's going to immediately, like, set itself, like... Because, you know, it, I mean, depends on things. Like, sometimes it takes time a little while to solidify. So what's going to happen on that front? Um, it looks like a dire situation all around. I'm so curious to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.